Hey guys, this is Wei. I just want to do a little show and tell after my trip to a local camera swap meet. This swap meet we have twice a year, one in April, one in October. Uh, I bought five pieces of toys. Um, I just want to do a little quick show and tell with you. The first one is a Fuji or Fujika 6. Point, well, 6 times 4.5 or 645 wide camera. This camera sports 45mm f5.6 lens. Um, you notice that this camera is so wide it didn't have the it, do, it didn't have the range finder. So you're gonna have to estimate the distance. The previous owner uh, had made a feet conversion, so that's kind of nice. I think the, the camera's in meters, so that helps. The Fujika 645 uh, seems to me they don't have a very good reputation for being reliable. So I have my fingers crossed on this one because I, one thing I really worry about is the winding mechanism. Can they give me a proper even spacing or I'm going to have trouble advancing the film and have it stop and you know cock the shutter and stuff. So we'll see, fingers crossed. I have taken one frame so far. So I still have 14 to go. This camera takes 15 pictures instead of 16. So my friend said um, on his, he has the 60, the 60 or 65 millimeter version of the same camera. His has the uh, range finder. Um, on his, he said normal 645 um, on a 120, you get 16 shots. But these Fujis, you got 15, so the film spacing should be a little bit wider. We shall see. I hope so. We shall see. And one thing annoying me is this right here. You see? There's a little bit of a play. I knew about that when I bought it. Um, maybe someday I can ha have it fixed. I don't know if it's even possible. I know that since there's a backing paper in the back of the film on 120, I probably don't have a light leak problems, but kind of sucks. But anyways, when I get home, <laughs> I find out that there's something missing here, right? I look online and apparently this is the PC connection terminal, PC terminal. It's missing. So I wonder if it's custom, you know, somebody removed it. So a part of the conversion for the stereo setup with the other camera I don't know but I think I'll just put a piece of tape on it it's fine or maybe get some shoe guru just fill this up because the camera does have a hot shoe so I'm okay with um, a camera without the PC terminal yeah finger cross on this one second camera I got was this guy Practica MTL5 this camera is a M42 mount camera. The reason why I'm really into, well, I I was into, well, should I say, um, yeah, I, I'm into Practica is they're cheap and they're M42 mount and they have split image viewfinders. And those are the things that's very attractive to me. I have two of these. M42 lenses that is really nice. This one is a, a Zeiss 35 mil f2 uh, ZS lens, Distagon. This is my favorite lens. I also have the 50 mil f1.4 point R. So I always want a, a nice more modern M42 SLR camera with a split image viewfinder. Now, when I bought it, this thing is fully intact. The rest of parts in here. Um, the reason I take it off is because I didn't see that there is a crack here, see? And I think the camera got dropped before and it landed on the hot shoe because I had to, you know, unbend this hot shoe to allow um, flash to uh, slide in. Anyways, but the plastic is really, really thin. I mean, this camera was made very cheaply and the plastic is probably a little bit thicker than a shopping bag honestly so i'm gonna put a little bit of super glue and make sure this crack is glued together and let it cure and then restore it back to the camera it shouldn't be 
too hard to do. So other than that, when I got home, this shutter speed dial, because it's so old, the, the glue underneath dried dried out. So it fell off. It took me a while to find it on my floor. And I, I put a couple of uh, dabs of uh, Gorilla Glue and glued it down. I think that did okay. I mean, the shutter speed almost lined up to the right dot. I think I could have done a little better job, but it works fine, you know. Now I can't take it off now, so it is what it is. I'm gonna leave it as it is. It's fine. So the seller tried to sell this camera with a 50 mil f1.8 um, a Pentagon lens for $75. I have my own lenses, so I asked him if he can just sell me the body. He said, sure. And I got this one for $25. Bucks. Um, everything else works fine. It just... The... Uh, it just have the, uh, the broken shoe. The third camera I got is this. It's a Bisoflex. So, in fact, I bought this right after the Practica. This one, the seller was asking four hundred and eighty dollars for the body. I can, I can, I understand why because this is the probably the most modern, the latest uh, M forty two screw mount camera body there is, right? So, um, the body is made out of magnesium. You can feel it's very solid, but it's lightweight, not a plastic camera. Um, the Shutter, just like any other Corsina or I'll say generally the Corsina uh, cameras like a Bass R or Bass T, you can feel that the shutter is, to me, I feel like a little bit cheap, but it, they are pretty quiet, relatively speaking. So kind of smooth. So I'm, I'm okay with, um, but I only got this camera for $180, you know why? Because it was marked 480, but the seller broke the mirror. See right here. How did they break the mirror? You you may ask. Well, on the Bessa or the Corsina cameras, the problem is that just one second. The problem is that it has nothing to stop the mirror from sliding down. The mirror is was glued to this mirror tray and over time, especially if you put the camera in a very hot car, the mirror will, will come down a little bit. Fortunately on this camera, the angle of the mirror is still, I say 45 degrees. So the focus hasn't been impacted by the sliding of the mirror. But when the mirror is sliding down so far, it will when they flip when when they um, when you fire the shutter this thing flip up, it will hit the back of the the lens element and basically a self destruction. So it hit the mirror, the mirror broke. Um, the only fix will be getting a replaced. Fortunately, Corsina also made um, the Nikon FM10 and Olympus OM2000. Those camera. Those cameras, I think, have the same mirror. So I just ordered a OM2000 parts camera. Should arrive today, so we'll see. I will um, get in the mail and keep with this camera and send it to someone. This is this is one of those things I don't want to do it myself. I will have to find a qualified repair person to, uh, to replace the mirror for me. In the meanwhile, if I put any lenses that doesn't have a, a protruding uh, mirror, I mean not mirror, protruding uh, rear element, it will be fine, it will work fine. Like this one, this is a 135 mil f3.5 uh, lens. You see once that get to the infinity, it didn't protrude out, so I can make it work. So, so far it's working. There you go. Okay. See, that's what I'm talking about. Sound a little cheap, but it's light. It doesn't feel like I'm shaking my hand. Anyways, 
Um, so, so far so good. If I shoot this with this lens wide open at 3.5, I actually don't see this broken mirror. But if I stop it down the lens to like say f8 or f11, the corner of the um, viewfinder you will see it gets dark. You can kind of see the shape of where the mirror is broken. So if uh, you know if one you're one of those people that shooting long lens and wide open, well, this mirror is fine. <laughs> you can just shoot as is. I think someday I'll have a fix. Um, the other thing I really like about this camera is the. Um, prism is not very too high up here so it fits in my pocket really well but downside of this classic design is you see there's a paint loss well that's the highest point of the camera so you're always going to rub against this so that's expected that you have a little bit of paint loss there um, but outside of that yep it's it's cool the camera you notice it doesn't have a hot shoe oh well it's fine I've I don't plan on using this particular camera for um, shooting some of the flash work. You know, there is a PC terminal, just no hot shoe. So it's fine. And then number four is this Canon T90. I always want one of these cameras um, because this is probably the most advanced FD mount camera Canon make. I heard back in the day, Canon introduced the T90, but merely a year later, they introduced the EF mount. So it really pissed off a lot of people because the mount changes. Now, you know, all of a sudden they're stuck with the FD mount, but the future is on the EF mount. Anyways, I know that Canon has to do it at some point because if they want um, the most techno advanced technology and autofocus, maybe the EF mount is a little bit better designed for that purpose. Whereas FD, they were made for so many years prior, they didn't even think about they could make a lens out of focus, you know. This one, it was marked for $100 and I bought it for 35. The reason why is you there's a little bit of crack here. It doesn't bother me, it's okay. But most thing that's gross or nasty is right here the viewfinder glasses basically crack halfway ironically i can still look through it and focus it's kind of a <laughs> it doesn't look good but it works so i just ordered another parts camera that's almost the same price as this close to thirty dollars um i will you know take the top off and replace it uh, outside of that everything seems to work fine I test folk, the infinity focus, it looks fine. Um, it's really, this is the first time actually I've seen the T90 in person and see how small it is. It's kind of hard to see in this video, but it's very thin, it's very small, uh, pretty much thinner than the you know EOS one, for example. So it's kind of cool. I, uh, yeah, let me fire a shot. It's a little bit loud. To fire the shutter uh, a little bit louder than the EOS one but it's not too bad it doesn't feel like it's shaking my hand I have a Canon uh, 50 mil f1.4 lens on this this lens uh, it didn't come with the camera I only bought the camera body for 35 bucks so it's another project I think this particular repair is something maybe I can do because all I need to do is take this front panel off before taking the top off gently. Maybe this, now that this glass is exposed, I can just um, slide it off and replace the new one. I have a found a parts camera locally, uh, well, locally nearby town, so I will probably pick that up and and see if I can replace it. The last one I got is uh, this lens. This is my uh, Bronica C2. It has, the camera came with a 75mm f2.8 lens, Nikkor. Uh, that's a kit lens for this camera. But I found this lens. This is the Zenzanon 80mm um, f2.4 lens. It's a little bit faster than the Nikkor. And I heard the quality is better. Anyway, I don't know. But I got this lens for $80. I think it's a good deal. I think it's marked for $120. 
Um, when I got home, I did notice that there's a little bit of fog on the inside. See? And that's probably, it could be dust. It doesn't look like a fungus to me. A little bit of haze, you know. It, it probably needs clean out. But if I can avoid, for now, if I can avoid shooting it, um, in the environment doesn't have um, sound flare or any sort of light flare, it's probably fine. The contrast might be a little bit lower. Um, that doesn't bother me either. So, but I would definitely need to have it cleaned out. It just, for now, maybe I should shoot a roll to see how much I like it before I decide on what to do with it. Certainly, if I want to keep this camera, I would definitely want this lens over the Nikkor. The Nikkors are nice, but this is a little bit faster. Anyways, so yeah. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Um, I hope you like these uh, these items I picked out. They're a good price. Um, do I need it? Uh, not really, but they're kind of fun to be a you know a projects you know separate projects. So not just I can shoot with them, but I, before I do that, and have them fixed. So we'll see. We'll see. I can how far I can get with them.